Welcome back to Object Oriented Design Part 4. I'm Professor Chris Berkson. Copyright 2011, all rights reserved. What is an object reference or a pointer? It's basically a variable that controls the object, that handles the object. A reference or pointer is a variable that tells you where in memory the object is located. The object itself does not morph. It is the reference or pointer that morphs. So if I say enemy object equals new zombie, okay, the enemy object variable is pointing to the zombie object, just like you see with the arrow here. Now, at a different level of the screen game, I say enemy object equals new mutant. And when I say enemy object equals new mutant, the variable morphs. The zombie object did not become a mutant object. The variable that points to the zombie object now points to a mutant object, therefore that variable has morphed. Right? I have to be clear here. It's the variable that morphs, not the individual object. Let's morph it again. Let's say enemy object equals new drone. When I say enemy object equals new drone, you'll see once again the variable enemy object just changed. It is now pointing to or referencing a drone object. Notice how we have three unique objects, but only one enemy object reference variable. It's the enemy object point pointer that morphs from a zombie object to a mutant object to a drone object. Why use polymorphism? Remember the problem we're trying to solve. 20 different enemy characters over many different levels. Polymorphism makes it easy to manage any combination of enemies. At the start of each level, I'm assigned a certain number of enemies to battle. On the easy setting of the game, it could be 5. On the medium setting, I want 10 enemies per level. And on the hard setting of the game, I want 15. That value is assigned to a variable number enemy, and that many enemy objects are created and placed into an array of enemy objects. This is the code to animate all enemies. It does not matter if there are 3 or 13 enemies. It does not matter if they're all the same object, zombies, or they're all different types of objects. For example, the first time through this loop, when i equals 0 and there's a zombie object in slot 0, the call to move position updates the x and y position so it moves in a zombie pattern. The second time through the loop, when i equals 1, there is a drone in slot 1. So move position executes the object and it flies to a different position. This causes the drone to fly. Move position for zombie will move in a different pattern than move position for drone. The third time through the loop, where i equals 2, there is a mutant object in slot 2 that has already been killed. It's a dead mutant. Move position is called for that object and since it's dead, it stays in the exact same position, crumpled up dead on the floor. Inheritance and polymorphism allows you to write simple code to solve very complex problems. Abstract methods are virtual functions. The key to using polymorphism is making sure all enemy objects have methods with the same name. You want to be able to call a method and never worry if it is a mutant, zombie, or any other type. Recall from inheritance, the parent class contains common or shared methods. You always know this will work. Enemy object dot inherited method. Run an inherited method using the enemy object. All characters extend class enemy. You know they will all have that same set of inherited methods. Recall also from inheritance, the child class contains unique or specific methods. If we declare these to be abstract in Java, for instance, or virtual, like C++ does, we can do the same thing. We could say enemy object dot abstract method. Run this abstract method for this enemy object. An abstract or virtual method is declared in the parent class, and it forces the child class to implement the method. Let's say your dad, the parent class, post a list of chores on the refrigerator that you, the child class, must do. Feed the dog, take out the trash, wash the car. 
Dad, the parent, forces you, the child, to do chores because he doesn't want to do them. A parent class enemy can declare a set of methods abstract or virtual. Then the compiler will guarantee that every child class has the same method with the same name. This is how objects behave differently. If fire weapon is abstract, then the object tries to eat your brains when it's a zombie. When the object is a mutant, it swings an axe. When the object is a drone, fire weapons launches a missile. Different objects, different actions, because the child classes have the unique methods to do things differently. And virtual or abstract methods call and execute these different functions. Methods with the same name. When the method draw is declared abstract in the parent class, or virtual in C++, there is a 100% guarantee. Every child class, zombie, mutant, drone, trooper, droid, snake, tiger, landmine, gun turret, lion, bear, alien, soldier, shark, electric eel, maniac, laser, doll, axe murderer, and psycho must have a draw method. All the parent has to do is declare it abstract and every class that extends it or inherits from it must have that method. This allows our simple loop to update the screen without caring which enemy must be drawn. In this loop for i equals zero to the number of enemies, I am going to go to the array and ask each enemy object to draw itself on the screen. An abstract or virtual method is declared in the parent class and it forces the child class to implement the method draw. You want each object to be responsible for themselves. Each will handle their own moves, each will handle their own weapon fire, and each must draw themselves. Obviously, a zombie object will draw a zombie on the screen, a mutant object will draw a mutant. Inheritance is a hierarchy. The parent class is the top, child class below it on the hierarchy. Which method runs greatly depends on how an object is declared. Enemy object is declared type enemy, the parent class. Zombie object is declared type zombie, the child class. When a child type, like zombie object, executes a method, it will automatically move up the hierarchy and execute an inherited parent class method. When a parent type, like enemy object, executes a method, it will move down the hierarchy and execute a child class method when it is declared abstract or virtual. Objects generally move up the hierarchy to the parent and execute methods there. Abstract or virtual reverses this and tells it to move down to the child and execute the method in the child. Object oriented thinking. Here at the conclusion I must confess my motive in these lessons was an evil one, to get you to think the next time you play a video game. Think about objects. Each creature you face is an object. They have common features. Those are the variables and methods in the parent class. The creatures also have unique features. Those are the variables and methods in the child class. Polymorphism and abstract or virtual methods allow those very different enemy objects to be treated the same in the code. So simple, generic code can animate and control a great many characters. Simple code is always better. The next time you play your favorite video game, see if you can come up with an object-oriented design for that game. Thank you very much for viewing these videos. Copyright 2011, Chris Ferguson, all rights reserved. Goodbye.